Hello and welcome to another edition of the Travel Show with John Gwynn. As you can tell from my voice, I'm still suffering from the flu. I must have a t-shirt printed up saying the unhealthiest member of UK Health Radio. But hopefully my voice will be able to last until the travel news are at the end. Two different types of holidays you may not have thought about uh, this week. Uh, later on we'll be finding out about hiring your own yacht and sailing around. And uh, before that we're going to talk about Ethiopia. Now Ethiopia probably might, well it's, maybe it's not a destination that's been high up on your list but it's been on high on my list for an awful long time. Uh the only time you see it on the UK uh, TV is with the famine, but there is far more to the country than that, and there's some really, really beautiful green hills to see when you're over there. Not that I've seen them yet, but only on the telly. Uh, so my first guest, before my voice gives out altogether, is Amelia Stewart. She's from Samoon, Samoon Travel, and when I recorded this interview uh, about 18 months, maybe two years ago, she had just come back from a trip there, which will be harking back. But again, it's much better that you hear a talk kind uh, interview I recorded a couple of years ago than for you to have to put up with his voice for an hour. But anyway, let's get straight to it and find out more about Ethiopia. Amelia, for those who aren't sure, whereabouts is Ethiopia? Ethiopia is in the Horn of Africa, so that's uh, that's East Africa. It's a country bordered by Eritrea, Djibouti, um, Somalia, Sudan, and South Sudan, and Kenya to the south. How do you get there from the UK? So you can fly direct from the UK, from uh, London Heathrow, into the capital, Addis Ababa, with the national carrier Ethiopian Airlines. It's very good. Does somebody from the UK need any visas, or are there any entry requirements? Yes, um, British citizens do need a visa. Um, It's a fairly straightforward process that you can do prior to arrival, or you can actually get it on arrival at the airport, but it's better to do it before so you avoid any queues when you arrive. It's a simple procedure. You'll need your passport, a passport photo, copy of your return air ticket, an application form. All of the information is on uh, the Ethiopian Embassy website, and they're incredibly helpful and friendly um, and will answer all your questions. Um, So you should check that before you apply for your visa. I had a yellow fever jab once and I fainted. Are there any jabs needed to go to Ethiopia? Because I really don't like needles anymore. Oh dear. Well, you don't need yellow fever anymore. That's that's a requirement that's been uh, stopped now. But you do need to be up to date with vaccinations. Um, You'll need to have the fairly standard ones like tetanus, typhoid, um, polio, hepatitis A. Um, Vaccinations like rabies are sometimes advised. It's always best to check with your GP first though. Um, also, malaria precautions are essential below 2,000 metres. So if you're travelling to the southern part of the country, you must take malaria precautions. Again, please do check with your GP first, though. Well, I had the rabies jab three years ago. It's quite a pretty colour. It's a lot sort of purpley <laughs> if you never had it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's fascinating to see it. On I have skin. had it, actually. Yeah. I've, have, I've, I've been... I'm like a pincushion. I've had so many jabs. So I, I don't really mind it, though, actually. So... Um, yeah, it doesn't bother me. I went to work on an animal sanctuary and it seemed to be a good idea to have it. So I was working with uh, leopards and cheetahs and baboons, so I did. Yeah, I imagine that was yeah good yeah. one to have then. Getting travel insurance was a challenge, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the brief history of Ethiopia? EP, oh, you know where I'm um, <laughs> yeah, I do, and that's that's quite a loaded question and a tricky question um, with a country like Ethiopia. Um, really, it's it's given that it's probably um, the oldest place um, or location of human life on Earth. So, in the, in the National Museum in the capital, Addis, you will find Lucy, uh, or the remains of Lucy, the bones of a skeleton um, that were found in 1974 by a scientist. And supposedly, the story goes that the scientist was listening to the Beatles song "Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds." Hence, he gave uh, the skeleton the name Lucy. Anyway, these bones um, they found to date back over three million years, um, which is quite extraordinary. Um, but going back to sort of more recent history, I suppose in a nutshell, Ethiopia has been a monarchy for most of its history. Um, it's also known as the Cradle of Christianity, which was started in the Kingdom of Aksum in the 4th century. It's probably it's the only African country to defeat a European colonial power and retain its inde- independence. Emperor Haile Selassie came to power in the 
the early 20th century, um, whose descendant from the King of Solomon. His representation is seen as a lion on many flags, known as the Lion of Judah. But his reign came to an end in the mid-1970s. Um, he was deposed by Mengitsu and a military movement that was known as the Derg, um, pretty unpleasant uh, military junta. Under Mengitsu's reign, uh, the country then suffered many coups, um, horrific famine, not to mention genocide, for which Mengitsu was tried for. Then uh, it was the time of uh, Prime Minister Mellos, who came to power, elected in the first formal multi-party elections. Um, and really everything's been pretty quiet since, apart from a border dispute with Eritrea in the late 1990s. Um, Prime Minister Mellos passed away in 2012, and there is currently a Deputy Prime Minister serving until elections next year. So we'll wait and see what, what the future brings for Ethiopia. I'll watch I'll wait for the uh, Sorry, that was, that was very much a nutshell kind of potted history, but... Um, I think it covered everything, and it'd be interesting to see the elections when they come. Yeah, absolutely. What about the climate? Is there a best time of the year to visit? Um, Ethiopia has 13 months of sunshine. This was a, a, a brilliant phrase coined by a tourism minister a while ago. It's become very much the national motto. Um, the Ethiopian calendar has 13 months. Uh, it's about seven years and three months behind our calendar, which can get quite confusing at times. But there is a rainy season, which generally starts in the north of the country from May to mid-September and starts in the south from March to May. The south is generally hotter and lower in altitude than the north. I can't cope with 12 months. I don't think I'll stand a chance with 13. <laughs> it does get confusing, but it's one of the... Um, rather eccentric, brilliant things about Ethiopia that you come across when you're there. You mentioned the border dispute a few moments ago and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office does advise, advise against travelling to certain areas of Ethiopia. But is it a safe destination? Should only an experienced travel, traveller attempt to visit there? Yes, Ethiopia is really very safe. I mean, obviously there are areas that you wouldn't travel to, such as the border areas with Eritrea or Somalia. However, there's no real reason to go there anyway, so you wouldn't find yourself going to those border areas. And obviously, it's always best to keep an eye on foreign office advice. But really, you don't need to be an experienced traveller to visit Ethiopia at all. Anyone can go. You're listening to The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. Travel news is back this week, and there's a story about another disruptive passenger. If this show's going to do anything, it's going to put you off flying, that's for certain, with all these disruptive passenger stories. But at the moment, we're covering Ethiopia. My guest, Amelia, from Samin Travel, we're still talking about the country, and now we're going to find out why anybody would want to visit there. I'm sure before this conversation, if most people thought about Ethiopia, they'd think about the famine and Band-Aid. But what is the country like? Would, why would anybody want to visit there? You just have to go. You have to go and see for yourself. I mean, Ethiopia still sadly really suffers under the enduring images of famine. And you just really have to go because it confounds every expectation. It will continually astonish and surprise you. The land is um, absolutely beautiful, fertile, green, majestic. Um, the whole country has such a rich and fascinating history and culture. There's more food than you can think of, um, and everyone has a smile on their face. It really is. Uh, it, it, it's just totally different from uh, what you imagine it to be. So you have to go and see for yourself. Okay. <laughs> What's the accommodation like? Is there a full range of from hostels up to five-star hotels, or is it pretty limited? Yeah, well, the, the accommodation is getting better. Um, it's getting better all the time. There is a range of hotels from hostels to international five-star hotels like the Hilton and the Sheraton and the capital of Addis. Outside of the capital, the best hotels are probably more in, our, in the range of three to four-star Western style standard. Um, but there are currently some great lodges being built, both in the north and south, and infrastructure is getting better all the time. It still can be basic in some areas, and it's best to have um, the right expectations before you visit. Um, and again, you'll be you'll be surprised when you do get there. Most are comfortable and clean and um, quirky, shall I say? Quirky. Okay. <laughs> 
I can yeah. do quirky. Yeah, quirky's good. Once you're there, how do you get around? Is it easy for somebody like me with no second language and can't really speak English that proper either to communicate to people? Yeah, I mean, uh, you, the domestic flight service is really good. Um, it's reliable, it's easy to use, and it, it's not that expensive. Ethiopia is such a vast country that it's quite good to be able to fly around from place to place. In the north, you can also hire a driver and travel in a car or van. If you're in a group, I, I take people around in a minivan or a minibus. Much of the south, though, requires a 4 by 4 vehicle because there's a lot of off-road. Um, but in terms of language, many people speak English. Um, they're, all, uh, they're also more than willing to help a lost foreigner, or Ferengi, as we're known. Mm -hmm. as, and the national language is Amharic. It can be quite a tongue twist twister. In fact, there are about 80 different ethnic languages in the country. So it's a fair few languages to get your head around. But it's not a problem, guaranteed. You'll, you, you'll always be able to find a way to make yourself understood. It's also nice to practice a few, a few of the words in Ethiopian. That also goes uh, a long way. So the word for thank you in Amharic is Amasaganalu. <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine myself just waving my arms about like I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> the, can you get the local currency before you arrive and are credit cards accepted no you can't get it before you arrive but once you get to the airport you can change dollars euros sterling international currency which is called burr um, it's about one pound to 35 burr um, but most hotels will change money there are plenty of banks in the major cities credit cards aren't widely used apart from in the smarter hotels, the shops and restaurants in Addis, so it's best to bring plenty of cash, which mm -hmm. goes a very long way in Ethiopia. My favourite subject is food. Uh, what, what is the mm. food like there, and is there a national dish we should try? The food is delicious. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the food, and there are many national dishes, uh, which you really have to get stuck into. The basis of which is injera. It's a sort of pancake made from the teff grain, uh, that is only grown in Ethiopia, and it's it's made into a batter that's then poured out like a pancake and rolled out flat, um, where it then cooks for a couple of minutes. It's got a really spongy texture and a slightly sour taste to it, but it goes really well with, with lots of different types of spicy meat and vegetable stews that accompany it. So if you don't get on with it, though, there's plenty of pasta and rice dishes, omelette soups, things like that. So the food some, is great. You have to experience the food. I will experience the food. But if somebody's got dietary requirements for health, relief, uh, belief, or...